Sandy, uh, it would be easy for us if this was the end of the story, but it's not the end of the story. And, and there's two additional pieces of information that are just around the corner that are going to complicate this even further. So let's spend some time talking about some as yet unapproved but recently studied and presented data on both the role of lenvatinib and the role of cabozantinib. So let's first talk about lenvatinib. So Bob Mozer reported at ASCO a randomized trial comparing a combination of lenvatinib and everolimus compared with a control. And it was a randomized trial. And the results were striking. Um, striking so much that maybe the FDA will consider that sufficient information for their approval. That's in their domain. But tell us a little bit about this drug called lenvatinib, what it does, why it might be doing something differently than other VEGF receptor TKIs, and should we maybe keep our minds open about combination therapy in the second line setting? Exactly. I mean, I think we spoke about combinations before, but this might be opening combination therapy all, story all over again. So lenvatinib uh, targets VEGF, but it also targets FGF, and that's always been thought as a mechanism of resistance. So this was a three-arm trial, and they looked at lenvatinib as a single agent compared it to Everolimus single agent, but also used a lower dose of both lenvatinib and uh, Everolimus. And what really surprised me was that the uh, PFS for the combination was almost double that of single agent lenvatinib. And uh, the PFS for Everolimus was similar to what we have seen in its original approval. So I think that uh, the patient population is real. You know, so seeing Everolimus with a PFS of around five makes you think that that's real. But the combination resulted in a PFS of almost 14 months, which was really um, astonishing. I think it is real. And uh, the side effect profile was not that different from what you expect for a VEGF and uh, uh, mTOR. But I'm, uh, I mean, it's hard to get too excited about combinations. I don't know if people would go back to it. Um, would, would you get the same if you were to do it sequentially? And I don't know how people would feel about taking two drugs. Both are oral, unlike the other combinations that we have spoken about in the past. So we, but we have a 13 or 14 month PFS in the second line setting, which is far superior to any other agent that's been used in that setting. And these are, let's talk about cabozantinib and the Meteor study, uh, because here we have an agent that is different. I'd like you to describe what it does and some of the results of that New England Journal article. And then maybe as a group, we can then have a conversation, imagine, that uh, these agents might be commercially available for us sometime in the future. How are we going to navigate through these decision making? Sure, I think you know cabozantinib is uh, uh, interesting because uh, it uh, blocks, uh, in addition to the VHF receptors, as we mentioned, CMET and Axel. And we published a paper from our group uh, in Oncogene a few months ago looking uh, at uh, to support this clinical trial. Although the, 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 the trial, the Meteor, was designed and launched and conducted before the results of our preclinical work, but our preclinical work suggested patients, uh, tumors that are treated with sunitinib do have a, an escape uh, with mTOR, with uh, Axel and CMAT, and uh, bring in a drug that blocks this does actually produce uh, tumor growth inhibition. So I think uh, now we are finally, we believe that uh, the CMET and the uh, uh, axle pathways are uh, pathways that are relevant in uh, progression, certainly after VHF uh, exposure. So the Meteor trial was a, uh, a large trial, phase three trial, uh, looking at 658 patients uh, randomized between cabozantinib and everolimus, the primary endpoint progression-free survival, and it came, uh, astonishingly, 7.4 months median PFS with cabozantinib compared to 3.8 months median PFS with everolimus. And there was a trend for the secondary endpoint OS also in favor of, cab of cabozantinib. Uh, so I think uh, this drug uh, I anticipated to be approved uh, pretty soon, and it will be another 
uh, so will be number 10 for uh, for us in our armamentarium to have for our patients so but as